AIR's popularity is coming to an end. AI image views are on the decline. Nobody cares about AI generated channels and a new threat lingers to disrupt it all. The AI user base was lied to with false promises, but you deserve to know the truth. Welcome to the Art Mentor, my name is Sean, and today you're gonna learn why AIR has become unpopular, how it set its course for its own demise, and why artists like you don't need to worry about this, learn why. So, as you're driving to work every single day, you're driving in a car, you're driving on a road, you're probably listening to something. But look, just because I drive on a road every single day to work, doesn't mean that I'm a civil engineer, doesn't mean that I can plan a city. Just because I drive in a car does not make me an electrical nor a mechanical engineer, and therefore give me the right to make any baseless assumptions on how a car should or should not be. Just because I listen to music every single day, does not mean that I'm I know the intricacies of what goes into a really great hit song. But however, somehow this exposure level of just everybody's exposed to everything artistic, which basically, by the way, is the entire world is made of art from artists because people have been exposed to art for extended periods of time throughout their life, somehow gives AI users this wholly ignorant and false assumption that they understand art. And when you look at the pro AI arguments, they'll argue that it's just a new media, supposedly, that it's just another form of artistic expression, that there is no definition of art and art can be anything and art is subjective. Y'all, I cannot think of a more stupid statement than trying to make art such an unclear, ambiguous concept. All of these are just riddled with absolute ignorance. Because if you really take a look at it, there's this thing called art scholarship, by the way, and you can read plenty about it if you'd like to, to prove this point here. But art has been a very well-defined concept for at least the last 150 years, and really defined, especially within the last 70 or so years. So for anybody to tell you that art isn't defined or art is loosely based, it's empirically false. And if you don't agree with me on that, then go ahead and get yourself educated on it. Go ahead and read some Elliot Eisner. Go ahead and read some Suzanne Langer. Go ahead and read some Maxine Green. Go ahead to read some John Dewey. Go ahead and read from any actual artistic source, people that are outside of the incest pool of AI thought. And you're gonna find that this is actually a really robust concept that is not that unclear. Now the ripple effect of this is that now we have a reductive view of art as just a simple image. And if you're going to approach it, this just supports my personal thesis that AI art users got into it for the wrong reason. Because if you are solely focused on the end product, then you are neglecting 90% of what art actually is, why it's meaningful, and why people follow and like people that actually do this. And I can conclude this simply because all AI art accounts, they don't even touch the numbers and popularity and the loyal fan base of actual art accounts, like big art accounts. They don't even touch it. No one even knows who these people are because it's not about the people, it's about the machine behind it that's popular. But what happened with AI art and why it became unpopular is that we threw a whole bunch of noobs into the ring of art and then nobody had any idea how to actually handle that or what's involved with it or what keeps people coming back to it and what keeps people sustained on it. But uh, it's kind of like throwing a bunch of toddlers into the NFL and telling them to have a good game. And artists, you know the truth. If you're only into AI art for the end product, you don't have any long-term sustainability or success. And I would guarantee that. And if you think I'm wrong, please, I invite you, tell me where you heard it down below. Just your exposure to art and your mom's opinion or your baseless assumption over the fact that the last time you took art was in middle school or elementary school doesn't give you the right to go ahead and redefine what you think art is. Now, let me tell you why Sora is going to be a major disruptor for the AI image generating game and uh, why I think that it's gonna be a good thing for artists, but not because it's actually gonna be useful. You no doubt have heard by now that OpenAI came out with their new text to video generation. And what is inevitably going to happen now is that every single grifter that hopped onto the AI image generation game is now going to migrate over to AI video. And then they're gonna hop over there in hopes of making money, which to be honest, they're not gonna make it there either because every social media platform in the world is really big and hyped up on video and that's how people will get more reach. Now, what does that mean for them though? 
nothing because honestly popularity doesn't really pay well and especially when we're talking about short form content like TikTok and Instagram it doesn't really pay anything and I'm talking from personal experience on that you're not really going to go anywhere with that you're also going to find that AI generated YouTube accounts are not doing too well and they're not going to do it any better anywhere in the near future because people connect with people not with machines now why this is definitely also going to be a great thing for artists is that with all of these AI generated images users now migrating over to AI generated video is that this is now going to kick a lot of new hornetness. So before when you were just pissing off artists, it was like, oh, haha, poor artists, you're unrepresented. But now we go over to the video area. Hmm. Now we have some media conglomerates that are probably going to take attention because this has now shifted from like, oh, well, maybe we can replace the artists on our team to like, wait a minute, you're telling me we can be replaced? If media conglomerates start to view this as a threat this is going to be so bad for ai what you're going to find here is that with all of these abandoned ai generated image accounts is that this is now going to lead us to be able to have more reach we're going to have more authentic engagements people are going to want to come back to you and come back to our platforms that were previously oversaturated because of images because now they're going to shift into video and that's going to be a good thing for us believe it or not so let's welcome some new contenders to the fight against AI, and let's also welcome back our audiences. Thanks so much, Sora. Thanks for screwing it up even more. Now, one reason that I think AI got popular at the beginning and was allowed to even get that popular, I really got to blame on the art influencers here a little bit and how art influencers did a terrible job at supporting us artists because I can't help but think about this. As soon as AI came out, what I noticed is that most art influencers, especially here on YouTube, they flip flop back and forth more often than a waffle maker. And it just didn't do anything good for anybody. So at first they didn't really understand it. And then they went back and forth with it. And then they either settled into some camps of like, well, I do want to do it because it's for my user base, or I'm afraid to speak out about it because I don't want to lose my viewer base. What that led to was a lot of art YouTubers and a lot of art influencers selling out. And then on the other extreme of it, how many art influencers came out over emotional, overreacting about it? They're crying, they're sobbing, they're angry, and they're pissed off, and they're screaming at cameras. What did that accomplish? All you gave artists permission to do was to sink into dread, was to sink into fear, was to sink into their own insecurities. And I just want to ask you this. Why did they do that? How did that help? because I really do blame a lot of art influencers for allowing AI to get as popular as they did by not speaking out about it sooner. When you're going to adopt the title of any type of influencer, you also have to think about this. Who are you not influencing? Because you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with just understanding those people aren't gonna like me. But I really do respect some of the big creators that came out from the beginning and said, no way. Carla Ortiz, you're a rock star. When I take a look at people like Mark Brunet, also rock star. When I take a look at Sam Young, rock star. Thank you so much for leading the art community down a positive path back towards authentic creation, back towards what's actually considered authentic creation. And I'm going to talk to you about that in this video too, about what is and what isn't creativity, by the way, because that needs to be outlined because that is a major popularity line for why AI art became popular in the first place. But it all started with influencers. I'm sorry, but I think a lot of y'all let us down. All right, I want to give you a hot take right now that AI art also popularized, which is this idea that your ideas matter. But I just want to challenge that actually, your ideas are completely worthless. And here's what I mean by that, is that you're going to find a lot of really broke people with a lot of really great ideas. So what's the difference here? When you take a look at one of the main stances of AI, which is that you can bring all of your ideas to life and you can unleash everything upon the world that you've ever had and anything that's been locked inside your head can now come out onto some type of digital image. I just want to ask you this. Why is that a good thing? Why do you think that your idea is worth that? Why do you think that your idea is actually going to be valuable? Because here's the reality of it, is that when you take an idea and you don't actually put thought and effort into it and you don't labor over that craft and you don't have the experience of refining all of that, what you have is a really dud idea. People see it as low effort interpreted as low value. And that's honestly why I need to let you know as an artist, you got nothing to worry about on this front. Here it is at the end of the day. 
If you don't actually sit there and refine and grind out what your ideas are and you refine it and you make the mistakes and you make the revisions and then you labor over it, you're actually gonna come up with a good idea. Ideas are not ever perfect the first time, but most people, especially people that don't have a business, don't have any type of success with any type of endeavor, they're gonna be the ones saying that they have great ideas at the outset, but then in fact, they just don't understand that most people's ideas totally suck in the beginning and then they become legendary through years and years of efforts and lots and lots of labor. And basically they're refining it and they're sharpening it like a sword. Be like that y'all. Understand that artist, that your ideas, because you're actually laboring towards them, make them more valuable, make them more attractive. And that also make people want to get to know you for it and support you for it. Just like I do for you. Now here's another curiosity that AI art brought to the table, which was popularizing the ability to just shove corporate interests and corporate propaganda down the throats of millions of people across the world, disenfranchise a whole lot of artists based on absolute nonsense and make marketing seem like truth when it's factually completely untruth. So when you are looking at what the promise of AI is, first off, they're gonna liken it to a human brain. They're gonna liken it to how we think, they're gonna liken it to how creativity works. And I'm gonna totally dismantle that through this video today. So you need to know this is that there's actually no factual basis for that. There's none. Who in the world is actually saying that outside the world of AI? Oh, that's right. Nobody. But who challenges it? Oh, that's right. Everybody. For example, Noam Chomsky, who is smarter than anybody watching this video right now, who has also been named the greatest intellectual of the century, has literally come out and said that Artificial intelligence is not intelligence, but rather a plagiarism machine. Who in the field of education or cognitive development or child development supports this theory? That's right, nobody. And then what's also interesting is that AI companies are also popularizing this belief that they can understand how to unleash creativity and imagination. But um, who do they have on their team that's an expert in that? Nobody. How many artists do they employ? Nobody. So wait a minute, you're telling me that you basically are making baseless claims about an entire career, an entire skill set that you actually know nothing about? So why in the world are we submitting to the baseless marketing campaign of every single AI company? Why do they do this? Because it sounds attractive, because it makes it sound comfortable, because it distracts away from what corporations developing AI artwork and AI image generators are actually doing, which is that they're stealing, which is that they're harming, which is that they're dehumanizing what is innately an only human process. No other species in the entire world on planet Earth is capable of creating art and having a meaningful experience. But they're gonna make you think that you can, but there's actually no supportive evidence in favor of that, none. Meanwhile, there are artistic scholars. Meanwhile, there are people in learning and development. Meanwhile, there's plenty of research that supports the theory otherwise. So why are you believing people that have no business telling you about how our brain works or how art works or what actually makes a strong image? Because AI can't generate that, but man, AI bros and AI corporations, they really sling it our way. And uh, they just have no idea what they're talking about. You ever notice that? but they popularized it and they popularized the spread of misinformation. Great job lying to billions of people, but we know better and more and more people are gonna wake up to it. Now amidst this whole so-called AI revolution, I just wanna ask you this, who's getting the credit for everything? When we take a look at anything that is AI generated, be it voice, be it video, be it images, who is really the rock star here? Who is actually getting all of the kudos, all of the praise? Because it's not the users, y'all. Even if you're looking online at AI user accounts, they're not the ones who really get the praise. It's the machine. And now this begs the question of, is AI art just a tool? Well, let me ask you this. If you're not getting the praise and you don't have the credits and you don't have the ownerships, 
Is it the tool or are you the tool for it? Because humans are the tool and the actual creator would be the machine because it can operate without you and it gets better without you. You're not actually helping it at all. It's helping itself. It's learning from itself. Isn't that the whole premise of AI machine learning, by the way, is that it can learn on its own. And then this leads to this nasty topic, which is ownerships. Who owns everything right there? Because it's not you, it's Stability, or it's Midjourney, or it's whatever company you're gonna look at for this one. They're the ones that own everything. And what is really dangerous about this is that when you transfer all of the ownerships of the ideas and of the products, even if you're just slightly putting it in, taking it back, and then you're somehow claiming that that's yours, which we'll talk about it in a minute, then that inevitably denies you all ownership of it. And that's even supported by courts. And that's only going to get worse and worse and worse for everybody that's using AI generated imagery in the coming years. Now, why is this dangerous? Because when you take art, which is essentially a human product of human ownership, reflective of actual humanity, and you're putting all of that into corporations, essentially what we're doing here is we're just surrendering all of our rights and we're just surrendering all of our creativity and we're surrendering everything that we own to a corporation. They're getting rich, not you. Even if you made a little bit of money, which 99% of every single AI user is completely dead broke, just like any other artist that's starting out too. And that's not gonna change for them anytime soon because nobody cares and their products are deemed worthless, especially by the job market, by the way. So therefore, what we're gonna see is that corporations are going to make out like crazy because they own everything because you're not allowed to. I just wanna ask you this, if you're in support of not owning anything, I just wanna ask you, how would you feel about that in regards to your children? How would you feel about that in regards to your pets? How would you feel about that in regards to your personal property? How would you feel about that when it comes to your rights because when you're just surrendering all of your ownerships to corporations and to big fat cats up in the c-suite then what are you doing and what do you hope to do with your life because it's not even going to be your life anymore did you think about that now what do we say and how should we consider those who are really championing ai especially within artist circles and that makes me sad but I feel like there needs to be some type of distinction between those who are authentically creating and those who are using an AI generated output and then painting on top of them. And I would like to suggest that to you, friend, and I would call them tweakers because essentially what they're doing is they're taking an output and they're tweaking it in order to improve it and then calling it theirs. Or they're doing some minuscule part of the process and then giving it to AI to bump up and re-render the quality of it. So what is really tragic about this is that I feel like all of these people, in my observations, have really just fallen under the dread of them feeling like they're going to get left behind if they don't adapt to it. But honestly, all they've done is adapt to die because all their stuff is going to look the same. All of their stuff is going to be really impersonal. And generally, as you take a look at all AI generated imagery, it has inevitably in the last year, especially all started to look 100% homogenized. It's all looking the same. And that denies you your artistic voice. And if you are a tweaker, like I'm suggesting, then I just wanna ask you this, like why do you not believe in yourself? And why do you feel so downtrodden? If you don't develop your artistry, even if let's say that I'm wrong, and that is going to be the future, what makes you think that anybody is gonna want you to do anything for them? When artists that actually did train themselves and did develop those skills, are able to do it a hundred times better than you. So if you're solely relying on a machine, I just want to challenge you with this, my friend. Like, why do you overvalue technology and undervalue yourself? The greatest piece of technology will never be created by man because it is man. And it makes me sad to think that perhaps you lost sight of that point. This also transfers into ownerships again. Is it right for you to call anything that you make with an AI at any point in its process your art? Let me give you this example. So I do paint overs for my subscribers all the time. I love to make those videos and it's really fun for me to give that help and advice. And I do that in a very authentic way because I want artists to do well and I want them to succeed well. And if you're on board with that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe by the way. And if I do that though, is that mine? Is that my artwork now? If I paint over somebody else's work, do I then lay claim to it? Is that right of me to put that up and potentially either get money or get endorsements or get loads of views from it? 
No, because I don't say that that's my work. I say that this is my direction and this is my tutelage. This is my suggestion. This is my advice on how to do better, but I would never say it's my artwork. I just want to ask you that too. How could you say it's yours? I think you're just tweaking it. Now, anytime anyone has anything bad to say about the AI generated image community, have you ever noticed how many people come to its defense with these totally gross misunderstandings and misaligned associations and people will say things like this, oh, well you use AI in your photo, it's not a problem when you use AI to help you use ways to get from here to there, or hey, you use AI every single day. Oh, but it's not a problem for that, but it is a problem for this. Why in the world are you homogenizing all AI into AI image generation? It's not the same. And yes, by the way, I am definitely opposed to data laundering and people should be upset about that. People should be more upset about that. But grouping all AI into one big giant pot in the defense of AI generated imagery, it's just wrong and it's ludicrous and it's just silly. AI as a whole could be fantastic for humanity, but that's if it's tempered. That's if we rein it in a little bit. That's if we keep controls on it because we never want to violate humanity by supposedly using it to champion us by replacing us. Why would we want to do that? Where's the joy in your life gonna be if everything is just computer made? If everything is going to just be some type of product from a machine that has no idea what humans actually like. Y'all, we are dangerously close to basically living the life of Wally, where we're just 600 pound people floating in space, all tended to completely by AI, and we only live simulated experiences. No, that is not the future that I look forward to. That is not the future that I want. And that's also not the future that you want, and especially not for your kids either, is it? Now, I gotta ask you a big question, Arnest. Are you just hoping AI will go away? Are you just sticking your head in the sand? Are you avoiding it? Or how about this too? Do you just get annoyed every single time somebody talks about AI? You get annoyed when you see a video, or you see a post about AI and it just enrages you. And I get where artists are coming from is that we're trying to take the high road here, aren't we? We're trying to take the high road and just say like, hey, look, I'm just gonna keep creating. And we've been told this, creators keep creating. But here's the thing. That's not enough. What we are currently engaged in is sort of a digital cold war. And when I take a look at this, you can liken it to a lot of socially unjust times in life. Like imagine if during the civil rights movement, people were like, racism is wrong. Maybe it's not. It just is what it is. We're just gonna accept it for how it is. But that isn't how it happened. Now is it? So it, this is the same thing, y'all. I just need to let you know that taking the high road has failed. You've fallen off the cliff. Artists fell off the cliff a long time ago. And that is not gonna be how we succeed nor how we survive through the current onslaught of AI-generated push and hype, which all of this, it's a lot of hype. Like literally within a year and a half, we've completely shifted from all the hype being about images to now being about videos. And that's only going to worsen. And then there's gonna be something else that comes out. And then everyone's just gonna have an AI generated girlfriend and so on and so forth. And it's just gonna get sillier and sillier. The thing that I want to just let all artists know though, is that we can't ignore this because if we solely focus on just being hermits and being silent, this will invite oppression into us. And I get it if you're annoyed with this, I get it if you're sick of hearing about this, but more than that, I wanna move you to action. The only way that we can oppose any type of oppression is by being vocal about it. And you can do this explicitly or implicitly, but regardless y'all, Let's support each other and let's support sustained human efforts because it does matter and it does make for a better future. Now, when we take a look at all of the AI users and why they say that they cannot create great imagery, what do you think that the number one excuse that they have is not having enough money, not having enough time, or this gem, not having enough talent. Have you ever heard about that? A lot of AI users say, well, I just don't have the talent or I wasn't born with the talent or I'm not blessed with this talent. But that's a big issue. Artists, there's no such thing as talent. And if you definitely disagree with me on this full heartedly, I just wanna ask you this, prove it. How do you test for it? If your proof of talent is in your observation of it, 
that's not proof. Like that's a decent subjective experience. Like that's real for you, but it's not really real. And there's a whole slew of actual scholarship, actual authorities that are gonna support this too. Because when you really boil down what talent is, it's really just a set of boring, ordinary, sustained efforts and really attainable traits that anybody can attain. It's not such a big impermeable concept. It's actually a completely human construct. And what we've done with talent is we mythologized it into this great big omnipresent force in our lives. And it just is a form of self oppression. There's actually no such thing as talent. And that's actually the focus of my dissertation, by the way, that I'm currently writing is on why talent doesn't exist and how you can deconstruct it. But I noticed that this is really rampant amongst the AI image generation community where they just feel like they're talentless. But just to be honest, when you say that you have no talent, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you're living under the rock and the shell and the veil of what we call talent, you're just making an excuse. Now at the core of why AI image generation even became popular was this concept that you were going to unlock your creativity. You're gonna unleash that thing upon the world that you're gonna have better access to it, right? But what is creativity and what does that mean for you? And let me just ask you if you dispute anything I'm gonna say about this, What's your proof in it? Because when you actually boil down what creativity is, it's not the end goal. It is every step along the way. It is every minor decision, not major decision that you are making. It is every single piece of humanity that you pour into your piece. It is an essential component of your process. It is how you make decisions along every step of your journey, my friend. And when you take a look at how you can potentially outsource that, then you're also outsourcing creativity and therefore you're denying your own creativity. And this is where a lot of people will say like, well, I just don't have an imagination. And I just wanna call that out. You're right, you don't, because you're not investing into it or you're not investing into it the right way. So at the core of this, what we have to understand is that creativity is not a product. Creativity is the labor. It is the efforts. It is the sustained efforts that arrive you at that product. People actually don't care that much about the product whatsoever, like we covered earlier. What people care about is the minutia of detail put into it up into that product. They care about the flaws. And what AI seeks to do is destroy that. It actually completely annihilates your creativity. I could put this another way for you too. Whenever I do paint overs on my channel for my subscribers, I take a look at those artworks and I maybe think this sometimes, like if I were to liken that to an AI generated image that I was given and then asked to paint over, I look at it the same way, like that's not the way I would have started it. That's not the way I would have painted it. That's not the minutia of decisions I would have made for it. So all that leads me to say, it's just not the same. And that's not creativity, that's just production. And they're not the same. You are not a tuna canning factory and don't look at your artwork like that either, friend. Another big essential lie that you need to know and just understand how AI got popular in the first place was this idea that you have something to learn from AI or how it somehow promotes any type of artistic growth and development. But I'm gonna stand here as an actual art education professional and let you know that is completely false. You have nothing to learn about art from AI, nothing whatsoever, other than like maybe you upscale your artwork and then you go ahead from there and you copy it. Like that's it, that's all you got to do. But at the core knowledge, you have nothing to know. And you're gonna defend this oftentimes as an AI user by saying that like, oh, you're learning about different movements or you're learning about uh, different vocabulary or different concepts and stuff. Literally, if you look at this thing, look it up, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy, by the way. Knowledge and vocabulary are the lowest tier, okay? Everything that's at the top tier of actual learning is synthesis. It's how you actually integrate all of those complex ideas because knowledge is worthless and application is everything. There will be nothing and no place for AI in an actual art education setting for those of us that actually do want to learn. So if you're still fallen under this illusion that you are learning through AI, really all you're doing is you're offsetting that because maybe you're confused or maybe you just don't know where to start. And in which case there's a plethora of great places for you to go in this contemporary day and age. And I guarantee you, you can find it.
You can start with me too, if you like, but there's loads of other great channels. Go check them out. Now, one of the worst checks that AI just can't cash is this promise that AI is gonna generate all of these jobs. And uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna generate a lot more images before it does jobs, because if you really take a look at the marketplace, AI generated images are completely worthless. Like they're cheaper than cheap commissions. And to them, I just wanna say, you earned it. Every AI user, you earn those $10 commissions. And thank you so much for taking them because now you've awakened all of our eyes to learn that yes, we are worth a lot more. And there are so many freelancing artists like myself, like people that I advise, like people that follow my advice, like people that are actually in the field that have actually increased their prices since AI came about. Me personally, I doubled my prices and I doubled my income ever since AI came onto the scene because people actually value it more. Here's the grim future of AI, if you wanna know it, is that it's not gonna to go to you, friend, no. They're gonna have essentially the AI call centers in economically disadvantaged countries, countries like maybe like Brazil or India, where the American dollar stretches really, really far and they can just have an entire farm and crop of people who will just generate everything and it's not gonna to go to you, friend it's gonna to go to them. And specifically, I'm not saying that's going to create opportunities for them. I'm gonna say that it's going to take advantage of them. And that's not anything that you're gonna be a part of because it's gonna be outsourced from you just like every other part of AI. You ever think about that? Now, AI art initially was very popular, but that has currently ceased to be, and it's only gonna worsen over time. And AI bros don't wanna admit this, y'all, but AI art is currently crumbling. I made a whole video to show you everything that's wrong about it right here. Go check it out. See you next time.